So a natural thing to want to know for the gamblers are in problem is, will it end with Alice being ruined and losing all her money? Or will it end with Bob being ruined and losing all his money? So what we're interested in, the probability that Alice ruins, that is the probability that our gambler's ruin process Xn eventually hits zero and stays there with Alice having no money. And that's the problem we're going to want to solve. So let's put Ri to be the probability Alice ruins starting from a point where she has I pounds So the number that we actually want is Ra, the probability that she uh, wins starting from A pounds, but we can look at Ri more generally. And of course the probability that Bob ruins is 1 minus Ri. So what can we say about Ri? Well, there's a couple of things we can say straight away. One thing that we can say straight away is that we can say what the value of R naught is. So R naught is the probability Alice ruins from the point where she has naught pounds. But if Alice has naught pounds, she's ruined already, so she's definitely ruined, so R naught equals one, because she's ruined already. We can also say something about Rm. So if Alice has M pounds, that means she's won all the money, which means Bob has no money, which means Bob has lost, so Alice has won. So the probability that Alice ruins is zero, because Bob has ruined instead. So Alice is certain to win, she ruins with probability zero. Okay, but what about when I is somewhere in between? We are going to use a very, very crucial technique for the whole of this course. And this crucial technique is called conditioning on the first step. Condition on first step. This is the most important idea in the whole of Math 2750. So the idea is to look at Ri, say what happens in the first round of the game. So either Alice will win that first round or she'll lose that first round. So we can write that the probability of ruin is probability Alice wins the first round times the probability of ruin given she wins the first round. Or she loses the first round, in which case we want to know What's the probability she ruins, given she loses the first round? So we're conditioning on what happens in the first round, and we're looking at the two different cases uh, multiplied by the probability of those two cases happening. Now, you might find that statement obvious, and if you do, that's fine, I'm great with it. But if you did want to justify it using a smart probability language, what you would say is that we're using the law of total probability. If you remember that from Math 1710, the law of total probability. If you remember, the law of total probability said that if you've got some events B1, uh, B2, up to BK, that are disjoint, as in they can't happen at the same time, you might have used the phrase mutually exclusive, and if they cover the whole space, you might have used the phrase a partition for some sets that are disjoint and cover the whole space, then uh, the probability of any event A can be split up according to which one of these bi's happen. Probability of bi, probability of a given bi. And of course, we're, we're here, we're using 
the partition or the disjoint events that cover space of Alice winning the first round or losing the first round. Right, one of those two things has, ha has got to happen, but they can't both happen, so that fulfills the rules of the law of total probability. So I'm happy for you to you know, take the statement of conditioning on the first step just as a kind of obvious thing. But if you did want to justify it using smart probability words, you would say you're using the law of total probability. OK, well, let's go back to that equation and see if we can fill in any of the terms. R i equals the first term is the probability Alice wins the first round. Oh, well, we know that, right? The probability she wins the first round is p. OK, the second term is, is the probability that Alice ruins given she wins the first round. That's this term up here. So if Alice wins the first round, she goes up from having i pounds to having i plus 1 pounds. But then by the mark of property, she can forget how she got to i plus 1 pounds and pretend she's just starting over again. And so that has room probability r i plus 1. Because she's won a pound, she's gone up to i plus 1, and by the mark of property, we can pretend we're starting over again from i plus 1, so the room probability is i plus 1. Similarly, let's uh, look at the other term. The probability she loses the first round is q. And then we have this term here, the probability of ruin given she loses the first round. But once Alice loses the first round, she goes down to i minus 1 pounds. But by the Markov property, it's like she's starting over again. So that's... Uh, R i minus 1, because of the probability of ruin, given that she has one pound less. Uh, we can rearrange that equation. It will be convenient to rearrange it so all the terms go on the left. So that would be P r i plus 1 minus R i plus Q r i minus 1 equals 0, putting all the terms on the left. And remember that earlier on up here, we said R 0 equals 1 and R m equals 0. R0 equals 1, Rm equals 0, and those are some equations we've got. Now that is actually called a linear difference equation. You might have uh, come across linear difference equations before, you might not have done. Uh, in particular, this one has a 0 on the, left -hand, on the right hand side here, so it's called a homogeneous linear difference equation as it happens. Uh, and we're going to find out in the next section, in section 4, how to solve these linear difference equations, if you don't know already. Uh, but for the sake of completeness of the notes, let me, let me tell you the answer. What we will find out in section 4 is that this has a solution. And that solution is let rho equal q over p. And if rho equals q over p, then r a equals either rho to the a minus rho to the m over 1 minus rho to the m, and that's if rho is not equal to a half, uh, equal to 1, or it's 1 minus a over m if rho is equal to 1. Note that rho equal to 1 means that p equals q equals a half, because that's the only way that you can have q over p equals 1. And we'll see how to prove that uh, in the next section of notes. Um, also, there's uh, just a little bit uh, in the notes here that you should read, which says, what if Alice is playing against a very rich casino? What can we say about that expression here? And I'll leave you to read that bit in the notes.